When I was first starting my agency, it was so stressful trying to figure out how I was gonna bring in clients and clients consistently that would pay me what I was worth. And it wasn't until I invested in coaches where I was able to unlock the secrets and the strategies and the tactics that the people who have done it before me used to make ridiculous amount of money. And so today I'm putting together a training for you guys that is called The Fisherman and the Gardener. How to scale your business to massive profits. The essential piece that a lot of business owners and specifically creatives miss is keeping their pipelines full. And so today in this training, I'm going to show you how to keep that from happening ever again, how to put those processes into place and what that actually looks like for you. If you're at the beginning of your career as an agency owner, as a creative, a graphic designer or a web designer. So I have a quick question for you. Are you afraid to pick up the phone? Is that what's stopping you? Maybe the idea of being on camera frightens you or you're too busy to prospect. Maybe you have so many projects going on. You're just too busy. You don't have time to prospect. When am I going to fit that in? I'm already working 12, 16, 18 hour days, right? Or maybe you're just not a born salesperson. Maybe you're an introvert. You've never had any sales training. You've never done sales before in your life. Well, the good news is that that's what this training is specifically designed for is to help people that are afraid of being on the phone, that are afraid of being on camera, that are afraid to go out and put themselves out there and make offers or, they just don't think that they're natural salespeople or salespeople at all. They don't want to do sales. Well, the goal for this training today is to help you get that breakthrough, help you destroy those limiting beliefs and help you get a foundation that you're going to need to build a successful agency. Because the truth is whether you're an introvert, you don't want to be on camera or any of these things, this training is going to work for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're an introvert, an extrovert, an ambivert, this training is designed for anybody that is an agency owner that wants to make success inside of their business. One of the quotes that I like to say is that if you don't hunt, you will go hungry. And if you don't farm, you will stay broke. And that is not where I want you to be. I want you guys to have success. I want you guys to have profits and I want you to have prosperity inside of your life and inside of your business. And that's why I'm here today. By the end of this training, my goal for you, I want you to know these five things. Number one is I want you to keep your pipeline full. Number two, I'm going to show you how to avoid cheap clients. This is a fact that so many creatives get stuck in is working with cheap clients. The third one is landing high paying clients. I want you to get away from cheap clients and start getting high paying clients. There's so many benefits, but you're going to hear me talk about that here in a few minutes. The fourth one is gauging your prospecting performance. What you track, actually grow. So if you're not tracking your prospecting efforts, your sales efforts, your marketing efforts, it cannot grow. If you're not tracking your finances, it cannot grow. So understanding that you need to start putting metrics in place. This is what this training is for. And then getting to a high level decision maker. I'm going to help you find the high level decision makers that are going to pay you the money that you want and help you avoid some of the gatekeepers or learn how to become friends with some of the gatekeepers. So this training is going to be super impactful for you and we're going to jump right into it. I want to start first by introducing myself. My name is Adrian Boisel. I'm a creative entrepreneur. I'm a social impact entrepreneur. I own a seven figure marketing agency. I'm a marketing consultant. So I meet with companies one-on-one -on -one and in group settings. And I'm also a creative mentor. I like to help youth. That's where my heart and my passion and my soul is. I was an at-risk youth as a kid growing up on the streets. I picked up a laptop, started doing graphic design, and I've been able to carry myself to where I am today because of that. Throughout the journey, I wanted to give back. And so I started a YouTube channel and now I'm a YouTuber with over 25,000 subscribers between my two channels. And I love making content for free on YouTube. And this is a big part of what's helped me build my brand and build my authority in the industry as an expert. The last thing is I'm a speaker, just like I'm standing in front of you guys here and doing this training. I love to speak all over the country. I've spoken in Florida, I've spoken in California, all over the country. And this is something that I'm very passionate about and I want to go teach and teach in front of a lot of people at once. And the reality is, is speaking is actually a form of prospecting. It's not part of this training today. It's part of a deeper training that I can do as part of my offer that I'm going to talk to you guys about at the end of this video. I know a lot about prospecting, being an agency owner and owning multiple businesses. Now this creative agency that I have that I'm currently running and now I have Instagraphics is the third business that I've actually had. I started with a nightlife business and prospecting and learning how to get clients 
in the nightlife industry, like limo companies and musicians, things like that. Then I started a printing and graphics company, which I sold, and I had to learn how to go get clients from that at a retail storefront walk-in environment. And then I started my creative agency, which is now a seven-figure agency, that I've had to learn how to get clients for that business as well. So I know a lot about prospecting. Prospecting is something I've mastered in a lot of different ways. And so I wanted to take all this information that I've accumulated after the last 15 years and share it with you guys for free to show you just a little bit of a taste what I'm gonna be doing in our community. One of the things I, wanted, I want you to walk away with and really know, and hopefully you have a pen and paper for this training, this is gonna be really important. If you don't have one, you need to get one right now. You can pause this video and come right back onto it. You need to have a pen and paper for this because I'm gonna be sharing a lot of information and you're not gonna be able to remember it all. If you write it down, you're gonna remember a lot more of it. Poor prospecting puts your income on a roller coaster of stress. Let me say that one more time. Poor prospecting puts your income on a roller coaster of stress. I've had many months across my 15 years where I couldn't even pay myself to the point where at one point I even had to go get a job because I wasn't out there taking action and doing prospecting and keeping my pipeline full. If you wanna be able to have success in your career and have the income that you want, prospecting has to be one of the most important parts of your daily routine. You heard me say daily routine, not weekly routine, not monthly routine. This is a daily routine. And I want you to write that down. Prospecting is a daily routine. The first time that I ever prospected was back in 2006. I actually worked after I came out of the car industry. I actually worked in the mortgage industry and I had a lot of success. And my first experience with really doing hardcore prospecting was calling title company leads. So the title companies, and the home loan industry would bring these massive packets of over 200 numbers, 500 numbers, things like that. And I was calling hundreds of people a day, cold calling. They didn't know who I was, didn't ask for information. I was just calling their numbers because they had loans. They'd recently bought a house or had done something with their home. And so I was calling all these people and trying to get applications over the phone. Because of the volume, because of the numbers game that I had here, I was getting anywhere from seven to 10 applications every day and doing about three to five actual in-home presentations every week, what were called respites, and going out there and meeting them face-to-face -face and closing about six to eight deals. And at that time, I was only 19 years old. I just turned 19. And in fact, I think, yeah, I was just turning 19. It was like the month after I turned 19, July of 2006. And I actually took that first month and I had $11,000 a month in personal income by doing that prospecting effort. And I realized that prospecting and sales is merely just a numbers game. And once you understand that, that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So the first step and the first piece of this training for you is step number one. Step number one is an important step because it evolves around every part of your business. And that is people. The hardest part for any business owner or any leader is people understanding how people work, how they think, what motivates them, what makes them motivated, what makes them upset, right? People is a very complicated part of what we do for a living, but you have to put people first. Without that, you have nothing. If I don't have clients, what good is my business? How can I serve people if I don't have anybody to serve, right? So you need to understand who are your prospects. Are you dealing with cheap clients who are just starting off in their business and they're trying to scrap together money because they lost their job? Or are you working with high paying clients that are doing millions of dollars? I'm gonna share that with you today. I'm gonna to go in depth and you're gonna understand this from a whole new level. You need to understand first proximity. When you put yourself into proximity with people who are having a certain level of success, you're gonna start working with people who have a different type of mindset. And one of, my thing, one of the things that my dad told me when I was really young was one of the only pieces of advice that he ever gave me that was truly impactful was hang out with four millionaires and you'll become the fifth. And it's so true. When you surround yourself with titans, as I like to say, you will naturally become one of those titans. When I was really young, I had a mentor named Larry and I surrounded myself with him and that was the first person in my life and in my business that helped me get to where I am today. And a lot of the credit of where I am is because of Larry. And so I wanna ask you this question. Where are you fishing? Because inside of your business, there's two sides. There's the fishing and then there's, an, or hunting, right? Because you're, when you're fishing, you're hunting. And then there's the gardening or farming. You need to understand where you're at. If you need to eat now and you're hungry, you have to go out and hunt because you need to eat today. You need to catch something, right? And so when you're doing that, you need to know what body of water that you're in. Where are you fishing in? It's an analogy that I like to use. Are you fishing in a pond with guppies and minnows? Are you fishing in a lake 
Or are you fishing in an ocean with whales and sharks, right? Understanding this piece is gonna be really helpful for you. So one of the things that I like to talk about a lot is quotes. You're gonna hear me say a lot of quotes. And one of my favorite quotes of all time, and in fact, it's on the banner that I have here in the office, is your network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. That's actually by Jim Rohn. It's a powerful quote, but it's true. Put yourself in proximity with people who have the success that you want in your life. Don't surround yourself with people who haven't had any success in their life and they're trying to speak into your life. You wanna to listen to people that have the life that you want, right? This is very important. So I first wanna ta start talking about ponds. So inside of this pond, we have minnows, like the little minnows and guppies. You got small little fish, nothing big. These are what I would call the small mom and pop businesses. You got the carpet cleaners that are one man, two man, three man shows. You got the towing companies. You got the local handymans and contractors and plumbers. These are the types of companies that are not gonna have gatekeepers. They are owner operators or sometimes a husband and wife type business. There's no gatekeeper there. And their revenue is usually pretty small, under a million dollars. It's very rare if you're gonna find a small mom and pop business that is gonna be over a million dollars. It just doesn't happen a lot unless you're a contractor and you're doing some big ticket like remodeling, right? But most mom and pop businesses fall under that category of the under the million dollars in revenue. And because they have under a million dollars in revenue, they can't afford to have big teams. So they usually have typically less than 25 employees. People are working on their team and they have a very small marketing budget. In my experience, and I'm just speaking from my experience, their marketing budget is usually under $1,500 getting to spend 500, 1,000, 1,500 bucks a month. It can be challenging sometimes for these people. So you gotta understand that when you're getting a small marketing budget like that, the ROI that you're gonna be able to deliver is also pretty small. So don't go out there and say you're gonna 10X people's money on a $1,500 budget. That's not realistic. You're not setting a realistic expectation. And this is an important piece I want you to understand and know is these smaller budgets, you're only gonna get two, three, four, maybe if you're super amazing and you do something viral, a five multiple, but that is an expectation that you should be setting with these people of what they can expect. And the key piece to this is you're gonna have one or two at the most probably three decision makers in a small business like that whether the husband the wife or two partners so it's going to be a lot shorter sales cycle and you're going to be able to get deals very quick and that's why it is important to start and walk before you run right and so this pond is something that you can tap into in the very beginning if you're in early in your career if you're not this is where the lakes come in this is where I've been fishing now for years and years and years, and I'm honestly moving away from the lakes. I'm trying to get away from that space and start moving into some of the oceans because I want quality over quantity. And I've been finding that balance with what I do, but it's really important that you actually move from a pond to a lake if you've got the experience, you've got the portfolio, you've got the resume and the testimonials. This is where you should be at. So inside of the lake, you're gonna have bigger fish. You're gonna have the bass and the trout. You're gonna have these medium-sized companies. The one thing that really comes up and starts to shift for you is there's gonna be a gatekeeper, a receptionist, somebody answering the phone. These business owners are too busy because they're doing over a million dollars in revenue to be able to just pick up the phone and talk to you. You might get lucky and get direct directly to them if you can find their cell phone number somewhere, but the, in most cases, you're gonna be dealing with a gatekeeper. A lot of people have the mindset that they need to get around the gatekeeper. I'm here to tell you right now, that's not the case. You never get around the gatekeeper. That gatekeeper, goes back to first step. That's your friend. Your job is to make a friend. You wanna get them to know you, like you, and trust you. So how can you improve that gatekeeper's life and give them something in return for them putting you in front of that business owner? You wanna get in front of the decision maker, so what are you gonna do for them? Are you gonna bring them donuts every day? Are you gonna send them a special gift? Are you gonna send them a video, right? There are tons and tons of ways, and I don't have time to get into that part of the training today, but there are tons of ways to get to the gatekeeper make them become your advocate. You can influence them, and once you, they know you, like you, and trust you, to wanna to actually rep your brand and your company on behalf of them, because they know that you're gonna have their best interest at heart, and you wanna make them look good too in the process. Typically, these companies have 25 employees or more. Their marketing budgets start to elevate to the 2,500 to 50K, which is nice, right? I got clients like today that just paid me 36 grand for the month to do SEO and paid advertising and host their website. Uh, the ROI, now because you're working with bigger budgets, you can start to experiment a little bit more, not too much. You can start to experiment a little bit more with their money, start to try some different things, see what works, see what doesn't. And this is where you can start getting contracts, longer term commitments, because mom and pops are really gonna have a hard time of committing. 
these medium-sized corporations are going to have multiple decision makers. This is really important to know. I'm dealing, one with, I'm dealing with one right now, which is a mortgage company, and they have three decision makers. And we've been going on and on and on for almost two months now for a $10,000 a month deal. That's just the reality when you're dealing with these bigger companies that are doing multiple millions of dollars. They have multiple partners and players involved that have to make the decision. So this is just something you're gonna to have to take into consideration. I wanna give you a great example of what a lake type prospect would look like. I joined a mastermind group back in 2020 at the very beginning of 2020 after attending an event. And this mastermind group put me in a community, keyword, in a pond or a lake, I'm sorry, of people that were driven, that were successful, that had had proven success in their life and in their career, that were well-rounded. They were businessmen, they were faith-driven, they were passionate givers, they were doing the deep work. They weren't just after the money, but they were after success in their personal life, in their relationships, in their marriage, right? And they, were, they had the same like-minded attitude and like-hearted personality that I did. They were health conscious, they supported each other, and ultimately they had an abundance mindset. What better prospect could you possibly go after than something like that? But the reality is, and this is where this is gonna be a big breakthrough moment for you, so make sure that you're paying attention and writing this down. I spent $15,000 to put myself in proximity with these people. One of my mentors, James Malinchak, years and years ago, we're going back over 10 years now, met Gene Simmons at a charity conference or at a charity ball. Katie Holmes was the one announcing it, and they did this auction where they had people asking, you know, donating money to this charity. And Gene Simmons was up on the stage with her and they said, we're gonna start the bidding at $1,000. Well, within a couple people of bidding, James Malinchak raised his hand and said, I'll give you $50,000 and he won the auction. Gene Simmons in that moment jumps off the stage, kisses James Malinchak on the cheek and says, dude, I freaking love you, who are you? He says, I'm James, I'm America's Secret Millionaire. It's nice to meet you, I just wanted to support you guys. I really love what you're doing, I just came out to support. And he said, man, I would love to talk to you. What do you do? And he's like, well, I coach and consult. Long story short, Gene Simmons actually ended up becoming his client. And if you know anything about James, James charges $100,000 a year to work with him. Gene has now been a client of his for over a decade. Do the math. He spent $50,000 and he's now generated over a million dollars in revenue from that relationship with Gene Simmons. But he also put himself in proximity with Gene Simmons. Think about the clout, the authority, the reputation, and the success that you get from that and the people that are in James's network. It opened up him up to a whole new world of opportunities. So that million is probably really 10X. It's probably more like 10 million from all the other business and clout and credibility that he got. So this is something I want you to take home. I want you to write down. I really want you to just know this, understand this, and take this to heart. You need to pay sometimes to put yourself in proximity with the right kinds of prospects. So now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit about the oceans. Maybe you're ready to go from lakes to oceans, and that's great. Maybe you're not there yet, but this is gonna help you for the future in understanding what the oceans actually look like. They're dangerous. This is an area where if you don't have an attorney, I would highly recommend that you get one. If you wanna jump into this body of water, you're gonna be putting yourself out there with sharks and whales, and those are dangerous animals. These people have a lot of acumen, they have a lot of success, they're making millions and millions of dollars from one or 20 to $100 million or more. These are large corporations, the Red Bulls, the Nikes, the Disneys, the Adobes, right? These are massive corporations. And you need to understand that there's gonna be a lot of decision makers, there's gonna be a lot of employees, and their marketing budgets are gonna be amazing for you. If you're able to get the budget that these companies can throw at you, you're gonna be able to expand your team beyond what you could even imagine. Their budgets usually range $50,000 and more. You're not gonna really have a conversation with a large corporation like that, probably to be really realistic with you, probably closer to six figures. That's gonna be their budget. And that's not yearly, this is monthly. I wanna make sure you understand that. This is a monthly budget of probably $50,000 minimum. And because you're getting so much revenue, you're gonna be able to go out there and hire the absolute best people on your team. And that's gonna produce the greatest ROI. If you go hire an Elon Musk, right? Not saying you can hire him because he'd be billions of dollars, right? But if somebody that's on his intelligence level, he's not gonna be cheap. You're gonna to have to pay a lot of money to do that. And that larger budget is gonna allow you to have those resources in order to do that. So you need to understand that and you need to understand that this is a long-term play. 
you need to have a solid foundation of lake clients and probably even some pond clients before you can even go into this world because you need to have that solid foundation of revenue because you're going to be pursuing these deals for sometimes years. Deal, landing a deal with Adobe or Pipedrive or some of these big companies can take years. So you just need to understand this is the long play. You're going to have to build your authority. You're going to have to build an amazing portfolio and it's going to take some time to get into the ocean and you need to be able to make sure that you're protecting yourself by having lawyers and having your paperwork and all of your documents and situation in terms of your business really well put together. So I want to share something that I think is really important and I originally called these rules but I don't like rules. I'm a rule breaker. So if you give me a rule, I'm just going to break it. And I don't want you guys breaking these rules. They're not rules. What they actually are are truths. So prospecting truth number one is to don't stop prospecting. I want you to pack your pipeline so full that you're just stressed out and you have to go hire more people. Consistent daily prospecting is going to change your life. It's going to change your business and it's going to change people's lives around you. And that's really where I'm at now as I'm developing these prospecting systems. I'm documenting them, I'm creating trainings around them so I can scale the prospecting from just me to multiple people on my team so that I never have to do another prospecting video ever again, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. So another quote that I have, and I love this as well. I wish I could actually show you visually, but empty pipelines equal empty pockets, empty pipelines equal empty pockets. If you don't have your pipeline full, your pocket is going to be empty. Your wallet is going to be empty. You're going to be broke and you're going to struggle. I've done it. I've been there. I'm not there anymore, but I really want you to take this to heart. You need to keep your pipeline full and never stop prospecting. All right. So, so here's some prospecting tips that I got for you that I think would be really helpful. Number one, you need to make it a top priority. I think I've driven that point home. Number two, you have to put it into your calendar. If you don't live and die by your calendar, show me your calendar and I'll show you your future. You need to have time in your calendar every single day for prospecting. I don't care if it's 10 minutes in a Facebook group, 20 minutes on LinkedIn, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You need to be consistent about it every single day. Be realistic, but put it into your calendar and live by it and stick to it. And the third one is you need to be able to understand you have to track the results. Because if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of prospecting videos or hundreds and hundreds of prospecting techniques and you're not getting anywhere, you got to be able to make adjustments and you can't grow what, you, what you're not tracking. So this is really important and I wanted to give you those three tips. So now we're at step number two. Step number two is you need to pivot. Once you start gathering all that data, you start filling your pipelines, you start putting out all that work and doing that prospecting every day, you need to understand what's working. If you're going out there and doing prospecting and a deal takes six months from that prospecting method on average to close, you may want to try something else that may only take a week or two. If you're trying to hunt or, or fish in the ocean, then you may want to go down to the lake. Or if you're in a pond, you may want to go up to the lake. So you need to understand what's working in your business and what's not. First thing you need to do is track your data. You need to understand the sales cycle of what that specific prospecting method is. If you're doing LinkedIn prospecting, it may take you a month, two months, or three months for that sales cycle to actually get the appointment to closing the deal. Map that out. You need to write that down. That is your first metric. Your second metric is how many prospecting videos, messages, calls, whatever I'm going to talk to you guys about today of how to do this. How many are you sending out in a day? Track that. And out of those that you're sending out, number three is how many of those engaged with you. So if you sent out hundred emails and you got 10 responses, you got a 10% engagement response. That's not the worst, right? But there may be some more effective ways like video prospecting. The fourth one is how many actually booked an appointment with you. And then the last one here is how many actually closed. So you put all these hundred emails out out of the 10 appointments, you get five out of the 10 engagements, you get five appointments and out of those five appointments, you close one deal. Well, there you go. Now your closing percentage is 20%. This is data that you have to track inside your business. And if you're not, you're going to continue to struggle and you're going to feel like you're just pushing water uphill. The second piece that you need to understand when you're going to pivot is understanding that there's rejection and then there's correction. Just because you get rejected and you get told no, that doesn't mean, mean that it doesn't work. Maybe you just need to pivot your messaging, your content, your script, whatever it is, your offer, whatever you're saying and adjust it. This is an opportunity to correct what you're doing. So don't take it personally. If you're getting told no, or if you're getting hung up on, or if nobody's watching your videos, you need to understand that you need to pivot when you start to get this pushback. 
And so really crafting your message the right way doesn't happen overnight. There have been scripts and messages and LinkedIn messages specifically that have taken me months and months and iterations, sometimes 12, 15 iterations to get it right. And that's just part of the game of prospecting. You're gonna have to realize that and you're gonna have to know that. Number three is again, staying consistent. Consistency is what wins in business. And also in your life, if you have a consistent routine, right? There's a book called The Compound Effect. If you read that book, I think it's Darren Hardy. That would be huge for you. Write that down as well. It's all about consistency. And so once you're consistent, and you do that for a long enough period of time, you're not gonna prospect for a week and get enough data to really get yourself an accurate representation of what's happening. A month, two months, three months of consistent prospecting, now you have a large enough sample size to even understand what is working inside of that prospecting strategies that you're implementing and what's not, and then you can start to pivot. And then the last piece is once you understand that, now you can scale. You can go hire other people to do what you're doing and you know what's actually gonna be the most effective for their time and for your time and your money. All right, prospecting truth number two. I want you to avoid cheap clients. I told you in the beginning of this, I was gonna help you avoid cheap clients. The cheap clients are what I would call the bottom feeders and they're in all the bodies of water. It doesn't matter where they, what body of water you're fishing in, they're in every single body of water. And I want you to attract high paying clients. And it goes back to what I said, again, is the foundation is people. Putting yourself in proximity with the right people. Now don't get me wrong, are there bottom feeders inside of the BDB? Potentially, have I met one? No, there are people that have struggles and challenges, right? But the bottom feeders are the ones that are gonna do credit card disputes and make your life a hell and wanna nickel and dime you on your prices and wanna micromanage your project and they wanna be the designer, but they just want you to be an order taker, right? That is not the client that you wanna work with. Good work ain't cheap and cheap work ain't good. Sailor Jerry, the tattoo artist said that. I think it's an important quote specifically for this truth. You need to understand that the high paying clients congregate in a specific area. And those high paying clients, honestly, are gonna be way better clients than the cheap clients. They're not gonna give you headaches very often. They're gonna be less demanding. They're gonna pay you what you're worth. A really good example of this, by putting myself in the BDB, is one of my speakers and one of my friends actually offered to pay me double what I quoted him for a website. Have you ever had a client offer to pay you double for a website? I highly doubt it, and if you have, freaking kudos to you, that shows the rapport and the relationship that you built. But that is a clear indicator and a data point that tells me that I'm doing something right, that I'm going in the right direction when someone's willing to pay me twice what I quote them. So this is something I want you to take to heart is avoid the cheap clients, the ones that nickel and dime you on price or want it tomorrow, all these things, those are the people that you need to stay away from. So questions that you can ask yourself, ask your potential client or prospect on how to avoid cheap clients is, hey, do you have a budget in mind that you need to meet? Oh no, I don't have a marketing budget. A lot of people will, will deflect and avoid that question because they think that you're gonna try to use that against them, especially the bottom feeders. If they try to give you some crafty, well-planned out, salesy type of response to that, that is a red flag or even a yellow flag that you need to be paying attention to. The second question is, how much have you paid for something like this in the past? Oh, I've never done a project like this before. Or, oh, I paid 10 grand, boom. Now you have some sort of a baseline. You need to understand where they're at. Oh, I paid like 500 bucks for my logo. Oh, they, are, they just now went from the high paying client bucket to the cheap bucket, right? They went from being a fish in the ocean to a dead fish in the bucket, which is what you do not want. Maybe you can eat that, but you're probably gonna be sick. And that's not what I want. That's not in your business or your life. And then the last question is, what's the most important thing for you right now in this decision? Is it speed? Is it price? Or is it quality? If there was one thing that was most important to you, which one would you say that it was? Speed, quality, or price? These are just three questions that you can ask them. They're gonna help kind of spot and give some flags of who those cheap clients are and who they are not. All right, so prospecting truth number three is you gotta use great bait. You gotta make an irresistible offer. And first, what a lot of people fail in is making the offer in general. So if you haven't put together a clear, concise offer, this is something you need to go back to and get very clear about. What is the offer? How do you fix that person's problem? Whoever that person, the people is that you're going after, what's the problem that they have? If you don't know the problem that they have in their business before you call them or before you email them or do any of these prospecting methods, that's your first mistake. You need to understand what their problem is inside their business so that you can create a package and an offer specifically around that. Now, giving value first is just 
the right human thing to do, but on a business level, you want to be a giver and not a taker. And so you wanna go and do some preliminary research and be informed on what that business does, what makes them unique, and maybe that's hard to find. And if that's hard to find and see what makes them unique, there's their problem, right? You just spotted it. And so identifying the problem and then offering to help them by giving them value without expecting anything in return. So maybe you do a website analysis, maybe you do a social media analysis or a brand analysis. There's tons of things that you can do to offer value to people upfront without expecting anything in return. And then you want to, like I said, you want to do your due diligence and focus on the quality over the quantity. So here's some prospecting tips that I want to give you. Number one, if you're sending out a message to somebody, especially for the first time, do not send, send links. I've done this myself. I've made the mistake. I do not want you to make the same mistake. It doesn't work. You're gonna have to send thousands and thousands of messages to potentially get one appointment. And like I said, pushing water uphill. So let them ask you for an appointment link or what the next steps are. So the second prospecting tip is do not pitch them. Let them ask you. I have this happen to me all the time. They go, oh man, this is amazing. So what's the next steps, right? I added value. So now they want to know what the next steps are and I can walk them. I'm leading them. I'm pulling the rope versus pushing the rope. When you pitch, you're pushing. When you educate and inform, you're pulling. So you want to pull the rope and not push. And the last one is you got to make it personal. Take the, build, take the time to build that KLT, the no like and trust. This is super important. So those are just some tips for you. There are two types of prospecting like I talked about. There's outbound prospecting and there's inbound prospecting. There's fishing and there's farming, right? Or gardening. There's hunting and there's gardening. So there's different types of prospecting. I want you to understand that these are the two pillars for prospecting that you can lean on always. And so investing your time and energy to produce results is how you're going to get success in outbound prospecting. The outbound prospecting strategy I like to call the fisherman because you're out there and you're going there to hunt for food to bring home on the table that night. You need results now. You need to eat. You're hungry, right? So you got to go out and fish and hunt. Well, there are four ways to do that and I call this the perfect prospecting method. And the first way is through video. The second way is through phone. The third way is through email and the last one is through voice and I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into those but for the sake of time I'm not going to get to go too too deep but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this. So the first outbound prospecting method like I said is video. You can do screen shares of people's Facebooks, their Instagrams, their LinkedIn. You could do one of their YouTube profiles. You can do website audits and audit their website and show them areas and opportunity where they can grow or maybe their brand and show them areas on their branding that they can grow and get more clarity in. and or you could just do something as simple as a friendly introduction of who you are and just say something that you liked about them, maybe an article that they wrote, a graphic that they made, and make it personal. This is a super important thing that I talked to you guys about in the tips. Back in 2015, I was in a really interesting place where I was done just being a consultant for construction companies and all kinds of businesses and consulting, but I wanted to open up an actual marketing agency, a brick and mortar location where I could bring in a team, I could start doing stuff in an office. And so I opened up this location in beautiful Granite Bay, California and with my brother and we started bringing on clients. But I had to have a prospecting method in order to do that. So I, I actually bought and invested, keyword, in a course and in a program that was super impactful for me. And this course and this program taught me how to do video prospecting. And in this time, this video prospecting method was super powerful. I needed to bring in deals and I needed to go out and fish and hunt every single day to build up that pipeline because I didn't have one. I had some consulting clients that I've been working with and I could ask for some referrals, but that's not a full pipeline. So I started doing video prospecting every single day, five days a week, about five to 10, sometimes 15 videos in a single day. Quick story, I had this lady, her name was Joyce, from a local butcher. I made a video for her. I said, hey, my wife loves your business. I just wanted to check out your website. She told me that your website needed some help. I'm looking at it here and I could see that you need this, 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 and this. I would love to help you. I'd be honored to help you. I'm just down the street from you. If you want to talk, go ahead and give me a call. That lady called me in seven minutes. From the time I sent that email to the time I got my response in seven minutes. She came back and actually met with me the very next morning at nine o'clock in the morning walked in, shook my hand, and the first words out of her mouth after introducing herself, she said, I already talked to my husband and we already decided we're doing business with you. That's the authoritativeness of using video. Video is a very powerful tool and if you're not using that in your business, you need to start.
I did over 250 videos that year, made multiple six figures that year. That's how I got my agency off the ground and started to really build some momentum. Closing rates for video, and this is a stat that I wanna read you guys, closing rates have increased for over 50% of sales pros who leverage video as a part of their deal cycle. Adding video, either the introduction, the video analysis of their websites, their socials, whatever, is a really good way to increase the chances of success and to stand out from everybody else. If you're not using that as a prospecting method, I really wanna encourage you to do that. Now the second prospecting method, and this is something that I started off in the mortgage industry, is your phone. Your phone has two capabilities besides social media. You have your phone, you can pick up the phone and start dialing, or you have text messages. The open rates of text messages are alarming. It's like 95% within the first 60 seconds. It's extremely high. And so sending text messages to people that are very personalized, that are very well thought out and that are informed can be really helpful for you. You wanna ask your warm contacts. This is a tip. You wanna ask your warm contacts for referrals rather than just cold calling all these people first. You have tons of people that you have in your, in your life, in business, in your career, that you can go and say, hey, I'm looking to help somebody. I need two or three people that you can refer to me that may need what I can do to help them. Do you know anybody that does that? Get that list first, write it down, and if you need to, send them an email and ask them for it in an email form. Whatever you have to do to make that happen, you wanna ask your warm contacts for referrals. Number two is you wanna send a friendly text message that's informed. Don't just send a cold text message like, hey, well you would need some branding, you need some graphics, you need a website, you need some marketing, right? That's not gonna work. People are gonna block you, they're gonna say, do not text me, how did you get my number right? You're gonna get a lot of pushback. Once again, you're pushing a rope, you're not pulling a rope. Make it an informed thing and ask a genuine question. Make an informed call. This is super important. If you're not making informed calls, you're not sending informed text messages, you're not doing it right. That's a mistake. You need to go back and actually take the time to get to know their business a little bit because prospecting is a numbers game, but you have to know who you're talking to. You have to communicate and speak to their problem. The third prospecting method is email. I don't have a lot of time to go super deep into this, but you wanna email your warm contacts, anybody that you've ever sent an email to or that's emailed you, email them all and ask them for referrals. It's not that hard, it's pretty simple to ask for referrals and I have templates inside of our community that we've built specifically for this. You wanna be able to send an informed cold email. So if you're gonna send emails, you're gonna buy lists and send out emails to people who never heard of you before, then it better be informed. And that needs to be in the subject line. Something you noticed about them that's different. Something that makes them unique that they will recognize and see, oh, this, actually, this person actually knows me and took the time to get to know me. And then you need to follow up with all of your old contacts. contacts. Every single person that you've ever contacted has friends and has a network, right? So the six degrees of separation no longer exists. There's really only two to three degrees now a days with social media and everything that we're moving in this fast moving world. Your fourth outbound prospecting method is voice. This is super underutilized. This is an area that I've been spending a lot of time on LinkedIn doing and other places is sending voice messages. If you don't wanna be in front of the camera, here's your answer. If you don't like being having your face on camera, you can do a voice message. It shouldn't be that hard. You can send a voice message via social, you can send them on LinkedIn, all the different platforms, and you can even send ringless voicemails. Ringless voicemails are really, really popular. They don't even get the phone to ring. All it does is they get a voicemail on their phone and it says, hey, what's going on, John? This is Adrian. Hey, I had noticed that you were doing this event next week. I would love to talk to you about it. I want a little bit more information. Give me a call back when you can and you leave your number, right? Ringless voicemails are another cool strategy for prospecting that can really make you a lot of money. And then the last one is doing voice text messages. Some people love voice, some people don't, but the people that do, they're gonna really resonate the fact that you took the time to actually message them personally via audio and that's gonna stand out from everybody else. All right, so now that we've talked about the outbound prospecting, I wanna talk to you about inbound prospecting. Now, this is where you go from your outbound energy and time and effort and all this hard work and taking the revenue that you're making from that and you start funneling into inbound prospecting. And inbound prospecting is invest investing money to produce results. Not investing time, but investing money to produce results. And so outbound grows while you sleep. This is why I've been moving and growing as an agency as I did all that prospecting for years. And now I've been building my SEO and ads and social influence and speaking and doing all these prospecting strategies. And I'm funneling that money back into my inbound prospecting strategies. This is what I like to call the gardener. You're planting seeds. 
YouTube for me was a huge inbound prospecting strategy. I have found thousands and thousands of designers that I've connected with that have watched my channel over almost 11,000 at this point on just that one channel that have found me through these seeds that I've planted. Each video is a seed and you have to go out there and you're still gonna have to put in the time and the work, but I've also put in money. I can outsource that entire thing if I really wanted to, to a team. I don't have to have my face on camera. I can do slides or animated videos or you know, explainer videos, things like that to be able to bring in traffic. There's a lot of people that do that on YouTube, even just making lyric videos, right? There are people that have millions of views on their lyric videos. So understanding that you can utilize some of these strategies for inbound prospecting will bring you a lot of business. So there are four categories inside of your inbound prospecting. You have ads, you have SEO, you have social, and you have marketplaces. So let's get into it. Number one is the ads. You have Google search and display. And I'm just curious, since you're watching this, what do you think YouTube falls into? I'm curious, is it social? The funny fact about it is here, and I'll tell you in a minute, is it's actually not social. YouTube has a social element, but YouTube is actually a search engine. So you can see here, there's Google search ads, there's social media ads, there's retargeting ads, which are all really powerful ways, but that's expensive. You're gonna be competing with all your competition and that advertising budget that you have to put towards that, that's like 7% of all the business that's out there. Very small and all of your competitors are fighting for that business, they all want that. And so the advertising is a really great method, especially if you're building a database and nurturing those relationships and you have systems in place, but if you don't have any of that stuff in place, ads can be a huge, money suck and so i don't want you to dump money into it if you don't have your systems in place but this is an inbound marketing strategy an inbound prospecting strategy that you can eventually implement into your business when that timing is right seo like i said with youtube seo is a search engine optimization and it's an important part of any business nowadays especially in the digital age that we live in you have google local google local is the map pack when you go to do a search 97 percent of searches are on google local there are other directories as well that I don't want you to forget about. There's the Bings and there's the Yelps and expertise.com. There's all kinds of different platforms out there. You can go out and do that research on your own or if you come into our community, we will have done all that research for you. But this is an important piece is making sure that your business and all the information about your business is listed on as many directories as possible. And because Google is king, you gotta make sure that you're listed on business.google.com. Number two is your first page results. Organically on the search engines below the map packs, you're gonna have your organic listings. Sometimes those organic listings can actually be YouTube videos as well, but most of the time they're articles on your website or pages on your website. The first page is the only page that matters. If you're on the second, third, fourth, fifth page, you're never gonna be seen. So trying to get yourself up there and doing SEO, backlinks, all that fun stuff is an important piece of you getting more and more inbound traffic. If you're in the first place for a keyword that gets 10,000 searches a month, guess what? You're gonna be getting a lot of inbound traffic to your website, and that's gonna be, probably be more business than you even need, who knows? And then the last one, of course, like I said, is YouTube. It's another inbound SEO strategy that if you're not implementing into your business in some way, you definitely should. The number three prospecting method is social, Facebook, LinkedIn groups, Twitter, Instagram, going on NFT artist pages, offering to do more designs. There's so many places you can do on social media, do the prospecting and drive that traffic inbound to you uh, just by positioning yourself as authority and pumping out content on there just like you would on YouTube. This is an important piece. Number two is just posting to your actual personal profile. It's just consistently showing up every single day on there because it's so personal, right? You're sharing your life, your business, your wins, your failures, your learning lessons, all that stuff. This is a way that I've been able to drive in a lot of business, a lot of appointments, probably one of my most effective inbound strategies, and this is something you should implement as well. And then going back to all of your contacts on these social media platforms and following up with them and saying, hey, I need referrals. Can you help me out? I'm looking for people to help. This is what I do. If you know anybody that needs this, please send them my way. This is an important element of social media. It's the relationships, and the relationships are the key to the success that I've had inside of my business. The last one is pretty straightforward, pretty simple, is marketplaces. If you're not inside of platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and Freelancer and Guru and all the dozens that are out there, this is something you might wanna take a look at. Somewhere to position yourself as an authority. You don't have to go off and offer cheap prices. You can go and position yourself where you wanna make the right amount of money, but it may take you a little bit longer. You need to build that credibility, you need to build that reputation and that authority before you think you're gonna go out there and start charging 150, 250, 500 an hour, right? You need to build that authority and show that you actually do quality work and that social proof of getting those reviews and testimonials from people on these platforms is really important. 
Another one, and this is where you're gonna find a lot of those cheap clients. So I'd honestly consider avoiding these if you're not at the very beginning of your career. If you're well established and you've got a great reputation, there's no reason for you to be posting Craigslist ads or back page ads or any classified ads, but this is an effective way to get the ball moving. You're just gonna to need to know to ask those right questions to avoid those bottom feeders that can cause you a lot of headache and drama inside your business. And the last one is forums, any type of community. Where are your people hanging out? Are they on Reddit? Are they on other platforms, other communities, wrestling blogs, graphic design blogs, industry blogs, right? These forums are a really great place to put content and to drive that inbound traffic to you. So I wanna show you this perfect prospecting method all put together. If you look at the two, you got the inbound and you have the outbound. What you wanna do is start with the outbound and then funnel that money to the inbound because those are things that you can delegate to other people that you're not having to put time, effort, and energy into. All right, and so the last step to this, and this is where it really all comes together, is your profit. All this work, what does this work for, right? We wanna make a profit because we can take that profit and we can impact people's lives in a positive way, whether it's our family, our friends, people who are, who are less fortunate than ourselves. And so I want you to start taking this energy to generate profits and then taking that money to generate even more profits, which in turn ends up becoming passive. And so I want you to invest a portion of your profits from hunting back over to farming for a long period of time. Again, that goes back to that consistency. In the beginning, it's probably gonna be 80-20, outbound efforts to inbound efforts. And then over time, you're not gonna to wanna to put so much time, effort, and energy, it'll probably flip the other direction. So the 80-20 rule does apply to this, and being able to scale your financial and your human capital is an important piece of this, so you need to understand that. You're gonna to have to scale your campaigns, especially the inbound campaigns over time by judging and adjusting those metrics that we talked about earlier in this video. And then the last piece to that is tracking and documenting all of the strategies that you've used. If you're not documenting and tracking that strategy that you're doing along the way, you're really gonna struggle and you're gonna to have to try to go back and figure it out later. And I do not want you to have to go through that pain and struggle because I've had to do that myself. So. Do you know what the secret sauce to any successful creative agency is? I'm curious if you know this. It's really actually simple. A lot of people can put some guesses, I'm sure, but the truth is the secret to prospecting and the secret to success in any agency is you. You are the secret ingredient. You are the failure point. You are the friction inside of your business. You are the resistance that keeps you from reaching the next level. And so you need to understand it takes investment into, your shell, into yourself and sharpening your ax in order to reach these next levels of your career. Going from a six-figure agency to a seven-figure agency is a completely different world. The amount of document, documentation systems and processes that you have to have is unreal. So you need to understand what stage you're in and make sure that you plan accordingly. So I wanted to make sure that you got all these takeaways as well. Who are your people? Who are the people that you wanna do business with? You wanna build a business that you actually love, that fits your life, right? Whether you wanna work 30, 40, 50 hours a week, whatever that looks like for you, build your life around your business, not your business around your life. And never stop prospecting. Like I said, I'm gonna say it one more time, never stop prospecting. And I want you to use good bait. And you wanna start with the inbound and start moving that over to the outbound. So now that we've covered all of that, I got a special offer for you that I wanna make. I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly, so hopefully you're paying attention. Special coaching program that's just for the people that are watching this video only. I literally made this specifically for you guys, and so this is a one-time offer. If you don't take it, that's okay, you're not gonna hurt my feelings, but I do not want you to miss this opportunity, so I feel obligated to share it. The Instagraphics Pro Group is a community and a group coaching program. Remember earlier in this video how I told you about I invested into a prospecting program and I was able to launch my actual brick and mortar agency? That was because of an investment that I made into a group coaching platform and a training platform. That's what you got here with the Instagraphics Pro Group. We are going to be doing calls every single week. It's a private membership community and mentorship community for passionate designers, web designers, graphic designers, marketing agency owners, anybody in the creative space that runs and, and does creative work for business owners. This is the program for you. We're gonna give you accountability. We give you priority access to all of our training, access to exclusive content library. This is all the templates, the documents, the proposals, the pitch decks, everything. We've all put it into this one platform and we're doing the live group coaching. Not once a month like I was originally gonna do, we're now doing it once a week. So this is a really op big opportunity for you to really invest into yourself and get a coach. And if you can't afford to spend five, $10,000 for a one-on-one -on -one coach, a group coaching place is a really good spot to start because it's gonna give you a more affordable entry point.
This group is for the best designers on the planet, and we're all striving to have better health, wealth, and relationships. This is not a surface level thing. Let's just make you as much money as possible. 90% of your business problems are personal problems. All the challenges that you're facing in your business are probably connected to your personal life. And so your health, your relationships are all tying into the wealth. So we're gonna go deep. We're gonna be doing challenging things like ice baths and cold water immersions and breath work and working on our relationships and our marriages and our friendships. We're gonna be leveling up in all areas of our life. And that's what makes this community truly special is none of the other communities that are graphic design related or any kind of creative related go this deep as we do. So we have really something truly special and that's why I'm so proud to share this with you. We're gonna be doing the weekly sessions. I will be leading most of those until I get another instructor to come in and lead them with me or to replace me at some point. But I'm gonna be leading all these so you'll be working and learning directly from me, from somebody that's been in the trenches for the last 15 years. And as a good part of this is we're gonna have a specific Facebook community. So if you love Facebook, you're on there a lot, we're gonna have a specific group just on Facebook outside of our, our platform where you can actually congregate and be on social media as well. All of these sessions are actually recorded and then they go into our community, into the Instagraphics Pro Group community where you can actually go back and watch them later if you want. So this is gonna be a valuable connection, valuable vault, a lot of really good stuff in here for you. And then the cool part is if you join this community, I'm actually gonna give you a VIP ticket to our next event. You're gonna get VIP seating, you're gonna get meet and greet with all the speakers. And this is probably gonna happen, this isn't a 100% date, but this is probably gonna happen sometime between March, March 19th, March 18th, somewhere in that area of 2022. So be ready for that and you'll get a ticket to get to go to that event. And then you're also gonna get a graphic design award voucher. So a submission for one category, logo design, web design, user experience design, uh, brand design, right? There's all these different categories that we have we're gonna be giving out awards for. That award will get featured on our website. It'll get featured in our community group. It'll get featured where you can actually copy a code and paste it onto your website and feature that on the homepage of your site or any page of your website. And we're also gonna feature it on all of our social profiles, our LinkedIn, our Instagram, our Facebook, all that fun stuff. So it's gonna help you get even more exposure and start to become that high level pro that wins awards. If you wanna win an award, we're gonna be doing that. And then the last piece is our circle community access to some of our subgroups. So we're gonna have some subgroups within the community, like a web designer chat, women, creative women, like all these different subgroups that'll be happening in there, motion design room, logo design room, social media marketing room, where we'll be able to lift each other up and help each other even with public speaking. Public speaking is one of the biggest fears out there, even higher than death. And so I've done a lot of it and I can help you with that. And so we're gonna have a group just for that. So there's gonna be a lot of opportunities to connect and level up in different areas of your life and your business. The Content Vault, as I mentioned, is a library of hundreds of hours of curated recorded content documents that's going to be completely exclusive to only this group it will not get put anywhere else the content the topics we're going to be talking about planning time management mindset personal development communication biz dev lead generation marketing i mean everything from prayer meditation health we're going to cover a lot of different areas inside of this vault because i want to give you as much as i possibly can to help you reach the highest level because rising tides raise all ships so here's the package. Everything I just talked about is laid out. Four monthly group coaching sessions, a yearly value of 12,500 bucks. Monthly group mastermind call, we're gonna be doing a monthly mastermind. We're gonna help you work in your business as well. On top of those group coaching, that's another 10 grand. VIP ticket to the event, design awards, access to the private communities, access to the content vault, you're gonna actually gonna get a little bonus here. My friend Justin Stevens offered to help you. He's a financial strategist and an investor. He's gonna help you actually with that. So that's another $5,500 value you're gonna get if you sign up with this today. You're gonna to get access to our private Facebook group and you're gonna get an Instagraphic swag bag where you get a shirt. It's actually gonna look even better than this. A hat, a coffee mug, which I have somewhere around here and a cool tote bag. So we're gonna send you out a swag. That's gonna be part of this deal. Now I was thinking about how could I position this offer to where it's actually affordable for creatives. Cause I know in the beginning of my career, I could not afford to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, but I made it happen. If there's a will, there's a way. If you really want the breakthrough, you'll find a way. And so the total value of this package here, you'll see is $55,300. My normal price that I'm gonna offer for this thing to everybody and anybody when this launches at the beginning of the year here, and for 2022, it's gonna be 3,600 bucks. That's what people will pay to be in it today only, and I'm doing this offer because I wanna get you as a founding member. I wanna get you at the ground floor of this. This is a really huge opportunity for you. I'm making an irresistible offer. 
I'm gonna teach you how to make irresistible offers, but this is an irresistible offer and I love and I'm so excited to offer this to you. I'm not making money on this, truly. This is gonna go all back to building this company and building this, this database of designers and creatives, but it's gonna allow you to get in for an affordable price. My offer, today's founding member offer, is 1800 bucks, less than $2,000. I can break that in half for you if you want. It's an offer for, you can put it on your credit card, you can have a friend, family member help you, support you, but it's gonna be an $1,800 investment into your career, into your life, and you're gonna get a group of people that actually are invested in you, that actually care about you, that treat you like family. This isn't just like, oh, another person in our community. No, this is another member of our family joining us. This is a really tight knit community. You can check out the Instagraphics Pro Network. That's a free group if you can't afford this. This is where we're actually talking every single day. We do a lot of activity in there. There's quite a few members in that group and you can see firsthand how close knit our community is. And this is just a taste of what we're gonna be doing inside of the pro group. So for this offer specifically, because it's such a cheap offer, I can't give this out to a lot of people. I'm making this exclusive to only 20 people. This isn't BS, I'm not just feeding you a line. I swear, this is only going to be available for 20 people. So if you're the first of the 20 people, once we do that, the program will be shut down and will not be available to anybody else. So $1,800 investment, this is a, a yearly deal. You're gonna spend 1,800 bucks a year to be part of this community. I wanna prove it, I don't wanna talk about it, I wanna walk about it, I wanna show you how powerful this community, the training, the knowledge, the resources, the mentorship, and all the things that we're gonna be doing in here can impact you. So if you wanna make this investment, all you gotta do is go to this link here on my screen and click the link below this video. Click the link below the video, it'll take you right to the page to go ahead and take advantage of this offer. This is a one-time offer and it's only available for 20 people. So once this page, once that 20 people gets hit, we're gonna take that page down and then it'll go back to our standard price. So if you wanna take it, now is your chance don't wait. I'd love to see you on the other side. I'm Adrian Boysell. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was impactful and I'll see you guys soon. Keep looking up.